Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown. We are your hosts, Bull and Bray, and today we're just going to be talking about some of these bowl games and also we'll be touching on the playoffs as well. So we're only going to be touching on the bowl games that are left that are SEC bowl games. So that Liberty Oregon game, we're not going to be talking about that one. I don't think there's any need to. But, uh, you know, the first game is coming up tonight. Uh, that's the Cotton Bowl, and we may get to that at the end, but we're kind of pressed for time. So we're probably not going to make it to get this thing posted before that one kicks off. So we may just end up skipping over it. So we're going to start off with the Peach Bowl. That is going to be tomorrow at 12 p.m. Okay, that's Ole Miss versus Penn State. Now, the over-under right here is 50 and a half points, and Penn State is favored by four and a half. All right, and I also would like to point out that Penn State has the number 13th ranked roster and Ole Miss has the number 23rd ranked roster, and that is based off of what 24-7 Sports has. So let's go ahead and talk about Penn State's offense versus Ole Miss's defense. This one's going to be interesting just because Penn State's offense does not look that great whenever you've watched them play, but we'll just get into the numbers here real quick. Penn State's total offense is ranked number 61. Ole Miss's total defense is ranked number 58. Penn State's scoring offense is ranked number 10, and Ole Miss's scoring defense is ranked number 34. Penn State's passing offense is ranked number 91, and Ole Miss's pass defense is ranked number 60. And then right here for the sacks, Penn State is giving up 1.25 sacks per game. That has them ranked at number 23. Ole Miss is getting 2.8 sacks per game. That has them at number 15. And then Penn State has a pretty good rushing uh, deal going on. So they are ranked number 26 in rushing, and Ole Miss is ranked number 71 in rushing defense. All right, so with those numbers, Bray, is there anything that kind of stands out to you? And then, you know, are there any opt-outs in this game? Like, what should we be looking for just with – Penn State's offense versus Ole Miss. Big opt out for Penn State. Their left tackle, um, one of the best uh, offensive linemen in the country, uh, Ely. I'm not sure how to pronounce the name, <laughs> but uh, he, I think he's gonna be a top five, top ten draft pick. He's not gonna be playing this game, obviously. Yeah. I think they have another tight end out, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Um, so you know that might affect you know a little bit of the run game. You know, a little bit I of mean, shoot, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna make a big difference in in their pass game because they throw to their tight ends a lot. Right. That's like a Big Ten staple. Right. All those teams do that. So, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, so just like for, for me, and I I'm, I don't mean to cut you off, but for me, whenever I'm looking at this, I see an offense with Penn State that is kind of like stuck in the early 2000s, maybe late 90s, that needs to get, uh, you know, upgraded. But what I do think is um, they are going to be able to run the football on Ole Miss. I mean, you know, like you said, Bray, they've got a good offensive line now. They are going to be missing their best tackle, but they've still got some studs up front. And then Ole Miss is not great at stopping. Yeah, they run that run. three three five. Right? Yeah, that that three three five it leaves a whole lot of holes for teams, especially you know if you come out with uh, you know twelve personnel things like that. You come out with those heavy sets. It's a lot easier to run. Uh, you yeah. know, whenever teams are going a lot lighter. So actually, it'll be interesting to see. Is Ole Miss going to try to switch up what they do? Like, you know, could they maybe play more of a four-man front? I think that they should try to. Well, their best edge is out too. I think he opted oh, wow. out the game too. Okay. So their their best edge rusher is out. Uh, and then, you know, again, Ole Miss has a pretty good pass rush. So whenever Penn State does drop back to try to throw that football, I think that they may kind of have a little bit more difficulty trying to block, um, you know, the Rebels front versus what they're used to seeing. It's a lot more speed out there yeah. for this SEC team. So, you know, I, I think that that matchup right there could be kind of a push. You know, I think it could be kind of a stalemate. Yeah. But I'm, you know, I'm worried or, you know, I am wondering if, Penn State's going to be able to score whenever they get those opportunities close to the end zone. You know, once they get inside of that, once they get inside of that twenty yard line, are they going to be able to push that football? And I think that that's where they kind of stall out. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree for sure. All right, now let's talk about Ole Miss's offense versus Penn State's defense. Ole Miss's total offense is ranked number fourteen versus Penn State's number one ranked total defense. Ole Miss's scoring offense is ranked number eighteen, and Penn State's scoring defense is ranked number three. Ole Miss's passing offense is ranked number twenty five. Penn State's passing defense is ranked number three. And then you see right here the Ole Miss is number 74 in sacks given up. And Penn State is number one in sacks gained with four per game. That's ridiculous. Ole Miss is number 38 in rushing. And Penn State is number one at stopping the rush. Uh, Penn State, you know, they got a great defense. I can tell from them numbers. Um, but I think it's going to be interesting to see how uh, they can match up, you know, with the uh, Ole Miss's explosive plays, their offense. You know, Lane Kiffin has enough to prepare. So when you give someone like Lane Kiffin a month to prepare, he's gonna he's gonna find holes, he's gonna find stuff that you know you, you know is gonna work, especially early on in the game. 
I expect Jackson Jackson Dart, you know, you know, kind of play st- put a stamp on his, you know, twenty twenty three year and trying to give him that twenty twenty four year. You know, I, I've heard some people talking about him as an early uh, Heisman candidate, so Ooh. he tries to come out here and you know try to prove something. Um, but this is going to be a chess match. Uh, Penn State, like you said, Penn State defense is really good. They got a good D line. Corners on the back end, back end are pretty good. Uh, DBs, linebackers, all that. So I think this is the most interesting matchup. You know, the game is the Ole Miss offense versus uh, Penn State defense. Uh, but if Ole Miss can get up, you know, they can score. You know, maybe two quick time, three quick time. It's gonna be hard for Penn State to come back because they don't really have an offense like that. Can't really score. Not will. Um, so I feel like that's gonna be an interesting component to this game. Yeah, I mean, definitely. So, you know, to me, Penn State is probably one of the, um, you know, like we, we always talk about these uh, these these Big Ten, um, you know, fronts and everything else. Like they're, they're top five in everything, but the offenses over there just are not that good. So I think that most of them is kind of like fool's gold. You know, they're not as good as what they're ranked. But Penn State, to me, actually is. I see a lot of speed on their fronts. And, you know, obviously their pass rush is number one in the entire country. I think that it's going to be tough for Ole Miss to block those guys because they are dogs. So it is going to be really interesting to see if Lane Kiffin can draw something up. You know, I'm sure that he's going to have a couple of good big plays drawn up, but is it going to be enough, especially if Penn State, you know, I'll I'll say this. If Penn State can get to 17 points, I think that they might win this game. I think that that's what their magic number is. But uh, you know, again, they are favored by, what did I say? They're favored by four and a half. The over-under is 50.5. Bray, who do you have in this one? I like Ole Miss. Um, I like Ole Miss. I like how they, you know, came out this season. Um, I think Kiffin, you know, he's going to come out and try to prove something. They have no more portal class, a lot of eyes. Um, they, they're going to come out, you know, try to prove something. Um, I think it's definitely going to be a, a lower-scoring game. Uh, maybe 28-17, 28-10, something like that. But I definitely like Ole Miss winning this one. Yeah, I don't really know how to pick this one. You know, I, I kind of do want to pick Ole Miss um, just because of the offensive factor versus Penn State's offense. You know, again, sending that to score 17 points. I think that that's going to be tough for them. I, actually, let me see. How many points are they averaging scoring a, a game? Let me see because that right there is going to tell me a lot. Um, So, well, says yeah, they're, they're averaging 37, 37 points. points game, Bob. Yeah, says they're averaging 37 points. So, I mean, shoot. I think I might have to go with Penn State in this one. I I, I think I, I think I'm gonna go ahead and pick Penn State uh, to win this one outright. Um, I think that it might be closer than what that spread says, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and pick Penn State. All right, so the next game is the Music City Bowl. It's gonna be tomorrow at 2 p.m. It's Auburn versus Maryland. The over under is 47.5 points, and Auburn is favored by six and a half points. And Auburn has the number 18th ranked roster in the country. Maryland has the number 40 second ranked roster in the country so there is a big difference in skill right there uh in talent at least on paper so we can start off with maryland's offense versus uh auburn's defense i've been hearing a whole lot about yeah. maryland's offense so yeah, before uh mm-hmm. their quarterback's not playing two is two his younger brother he's oh, not wow. playing he's opted out the game uh, so, so that's big obviously that's you don't have your starting quarterback it's big um so yeah so before you start to win the let yeah no so in. that that is big okay so we'll we'll make it quick but Maryland's total offense is ranked number 55. Auburn's total defense is ranked number 50. Maryland's scoring offense is ranked number 51. Auburn's scoring defense is ranked number 35. Maryland's uh, passing offense is ranked number 19. Auburn's passing defense is ranked number 32. Maryland is ranked number 74 in sacks given up. And Auburn is ranked number 43 in in team sacks. And Maryland is uh, ranked number 114 in rushing. And Auburn is ranked number 81 in rush defense. So looking at those numbers, it sounds like uh, Maryland's going to have a tough time running on Ole Miss. And then, you know, you said that uh, that Tua's younger brother, I I forget his name, but he's out. So that's huge because I know he was a huge Mm -hmm. part of their offense. But, you know, not to not to jump sides too quickly, but Auburn doesn't have the best offense. I mean, they've got a good running offense, but they don't really pass the football. We'll get to that in just a minute. Yeah. Um, You know. When when you're starting QB, especially someone like uh you know to his younger brother, I'm just gonna refer to him as that. I don't understand here. Um, but especially you know he's been a good quarterback for them. Um, so we don't have your starting quarterback. I mean, I know you have a month with you know bowl prep, so you, you kind of know you know he's not gonna be playing. So you have you know different people taking reps with the with the starts and stuff. But I just see it hard to score. I mean, Maryland's one of the two. Like, you saw the talent gap. Like Maryland's not by any means like Auburn went head to head with Alabama, you know, and they kind of you know almost stopped that offense. 
So I think Auburn is going to come out here. You know, I feel like they're going to dominate uh, both sides of the ball, uh, but especially on defense. I don't see Maryland really getting anything going. Yeah, so I haven't really seen Maryland play too much. I'm just kind of like looking at the numbers. You know, I've seen a little bit of them play. But, you know, I wouldn't just say just because Auburn stuck with Bama and they stuck with Georgia that they're going to be able to go out and beat Maryland because Styles made fights. And, uh, you know, Nick Saban struggles with those mobile quarterbacks, and so does Kirby Smart because he pretty much learned everything from Nick Saban. So they've got very similar styles in how they coach. But I think it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. I can't really call it. Let's go back. So Auburn is um, favored by six and a half points. I don't know, man. I mean, Bray, you would probably know a lot better than, than I do. Uh, I mean, Auburn, I, they've gotten better as the season went on, especially offensive-wise. I think Payton throwing, uh, throwing wherever he changed them. Mm-hmm. I think he picked up all the confidence. Um, and, you know, the last time they played out, man, man, it seems like they were throwing a little bit more, um, giving him a little more freedom, you know, throwing the ball, different schemes and stuff like that. Um, you know, they're still going to be able to run the ball. You know, so I mean, I think Auburn comes out here. You know, I think they won like I want to say probably like thirty one seven, thirty one ten. I feel wow. like I feel like Auburn will come out here and dominate. You know, he freeze. This is his first year at Auburn. You know, they gonna be real good. Uh, you know, they got a good recruiting class coming in. They oh be, yeah, no, nah, I mean they're they're they're, they're, they're definitely they're gonna be really good. I mean, shoot, I think that next season nobody's talking about them yet, yeah. but next season you've got to watch out. Actually, like whenever I was prepping for this and I saw they had the number eighteenth ranked roster, I said. Dang, already, dude, like, like they yeah, already yeah, at number yeah. eighteen. So, but it, then it also kind of goes to show. Well, dang, they're ranked number eighteenth. But you know, I guess Coach Freeze doesn't really have his his type of players yet because they didn't perform well. You know, this season. Although, I mean, you know, they had a pretty I tough. Mean, schedule. I think what they lost to Georgia by seven. Uh, they lost to Ole Miss by. Seven. Yeah, but they also lost to. Uh, they what? lost to New Mexico State. Yeah, that's just you can't. I mean, can't so do that. you know, you know, but you know. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like but so so anyway. My whole my whole point of kind of where I was going with that is just to say that Maryland, you know, they play up against run heavy offenses all the time. So with an offense, even though it's got some wrinkles to it, uh, you know, but I think that Auburn's offense can be stopped by Maryland if they're used to just plugging up gaps and stopping the daggum run. Unless Auburn can throw that football, um, I see them kind of struggling in this game to put up points. Maybe not. You know, maybe not like nothing crazy, but you know, I think that it's not going to be that high scoring of a game. What you said, thirty to seventeen. Jay, thirty one to ten. Okay, thirty one to ten. I don't see them scoring thirty one points. I mean, I could be off, but I think that maybe they score about twenty, twenty one, something like that. I think it's going to be one of those types of games. You know, like a twenty one to ten type. You know, twenty one seventeen type of game. But you know, I do feel like I'm going to have to take Auburn just because Tua's little brother is not going to be starting yeah. for for Maryland. So. Awesome. And they, they, yeah, they're yeah. going to be able to create turnover, you know, not try to, you know, go too far. But they're going to be able to create turnover and stuff like that. That's why I think they'll be able to score a lot, score a lot of points. All right, so on to the next one. All right, and the next one is the Orange Bowl. Okay, it's Georgia versus Florida State. This is the battle of the losers, the two teams that didn't make it. Uh, this game is going to be tomorrow at 4 p.m. Georgia's favorite by 20 points. The over-under is 44 and a half. And Bray, you were just talking about all the opt outs for Florida State. What you said yeah, is like 97%. 95% of the offensive production is not going to be playing for Florida State here. Their best, wow. D, their best D line is not going to be playing. Oh, man, I mean, I kind of get it. You know, when you go 13 0, or with the 13 0, right? When the, mm. when the ACC, all that, you don't yeah. get in. It's it's tough, you know. So, you know, I, I kind of get when they're not playing. But I think Georgia's going to come out here and dominate. You know, I'm, I'm interested to see yeah. how we uh, respond. Um, You know, I'll, Pretty much all of our guys are playing. Uh, I mean, Brock Brock did practice today. He did go through walkthroughs. So did Mims. Um, so it's interesting. You know, I think it'll be a game time decision. Interesting to see how uh, they interesting to see how that plays out. But I'm just excited. I'm just excited to you know watch Georgia play again for you know the last time 20, 2023 before we come back next year and win the national championship again. That's hilarious, man. Because you know Georgia does have to go to Tuscaloosa yeah, next season, know, and, and y'all got to play Texas, and y'all got to play Ole Miss, and y'all got to play them uh, balls. I'm not with baby. You. Yeah. So look at the portal class, man. Look, y'all about to go back to nine and three or whatever. That's y'all about to go back to that. But anyway, yeah, this is a game. I don't think that it's really any point for us to talk on these numbers too much. I think that that just lengthens out this video too much. <laughs> just, uh, but now, I guess just to make it more interesting, if Florida State had all of their players, um, you know, I would if they had everybody, 
This I think that this could be an interesting game. I think that yeah. Florida State's got enough talent. I think the Florida State has all their players. I, I think they're they're a top four team for sure when they have all their players. Um, but without Jordan Travis, you know, I, I get why they you know not to try to speak on this too much, but I get why the community put them in. But you know that's a whole different uh, subject, a whole different matter. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, again, not to go too far off on a tangent, but it kind of pisses me off because if you're gonna do that, like if you're gonna put the the best four teams in, I still think that Tennessee was one of the best. Four teams last year because oh, Tennessee was better than Tennessee was better than TCU. TCU. Tennessee was better than Michigan, even with Joe Milton. That's just how I feel. But yeah. you know, again, uh, I think that we both are picking Georgia not only to cover but to kind of blow the cover off of the daggum ball, whatever, however you want to phrase it. This is going to be a blowout. Um, oh, you know, man. Florida State does not have anybody playing. I think that what that the third or fourth string quarterback opted out yeah. too, didn't? Uh, so. Jordan Travis obviously breaks the legs. He's not playing. Well, yeah, uh, we, we know about him. But Rotor that Mark, uh, Rotor maker, mm-hmm. he entered the portal like two days ago, or maybe it was yesterday. I don't know. So brought Grant, brought uh, Glenn starting. He came in for I think a drivers for the, um, but that's it. I don't really think he's played. Since yeah, he that that anymore. one's gonna get ugly, dude. Um, and it's especially because it sounds like all of Georgia's players are are playing. You know, are they gonna be motivated for the game? Probably. Yeah that that one that one could get that one could get real ugly. But let's go on to the next one. And now we're going to get into the playoffs. And the first game that I want to talk about is the Rose Bowl. So Alabama versus Michigan. All right, this is a big matchup. Everyone's talking about it. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know if it's going to be as close of a game as some people are trying to let on. And I've said this, you know, I've kind of talked about this game several times on this channel. And I was really one of the first people to say, I don't really see a way that Michigan is going to be able to win this game. And now as we're getting closer to kickoff, I'm hearing more and more analysts saying the exact same thing. But Bray, what are your thoughts on this one? Um, I think it's a really good game. Uh, you know, you got two high level playoff teams, two high level, you know, good teams. I think it's a really good game. Um, you know, I like I like Michigan. Uh, and I just got a good feeling. I like Michigan. I like their defense. They're gonna be stingy and come up, you know, play hard. Uh, they got to play zone. They can't play man versus Miller. Um, but I trust their DBs. You know, uh, Will Johnson. I think I'm not not DB two. He's real good. They got two real good corners. Uh, you know, so I, I feel like it's gonna be a good matchup. Now the, the the main problem that it brings is how are they gonna be able to score? Um, but I feel like at times they proved it. First, Ohio State they proved they can score. Blake Corum, uh, Don Edwards, that might be the best one two running back punch college football. Uh, you know, I think you know they're gonna come out. You know, I think it's gonna be a good, I think it's gonna be a good game. But I think Michigan's gonna pull it out. Yeah, um, I don't know about that. I mean, I guess you didn't see uh Jalen Wright and um. Jabari Small and Dylan Sampson play yeah, you're all right. the season. You're right. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't <laughs> pay attention. To it, yeah. Well, so I don't know. I, I'm kind of. I'm more like you. I don't see how Michigan can score on Alabama's defense, or I don't see how they can keep up. I guess is a better way for me to phrase that because what they do is they play such an up and down brand of football where it's hey we're gonna run the football and then we're gonna work you know play action okay stuff like that. Um, you know, Alabama is too good of a football team for them to be able to do that versus them. That's the type of an offense uh, or, you know, style of play that you run and use whenever you're playing up against teams that are, they just can't match you physically. And that's what they're used to doing playing in the, in the big team. They only play two teams every single season that can match them physically. So they can get by doing that up there, but their roster right now, as far as talent goes, is ranked number 14. And I'm talking about Michigan and Alabama's is ranked number one. So there is a big talent gap right there. And I just, unless we see a completely different offense come out, and I'm talking about like the whole style and everything, the play calling, everything would have to be completely different, um, you know, for Michigan to have a chance to win this game outside of Alabama playing one of the worst games in school history. I think that Alabama would have to have three to four turnovers. One, maybe two of those would have to go for six for Michigan to be able to win this game. I just don't see it being close. And yeah, I know Michigan fans are going to get mad about it, but it just is what it is. You know, we can wait until Monday and then y'all can come back and let me know how the game went. But we saw what happened last year, okay? Go in there and lose to a, uh, to a team that no one thought should even be in the playoffs. That same team goes on to the national championship and gets embarrassed, okay? Year before that, you play up against Georgia, you get embarrassed. I just don't think that that style of play works versus teams that have more team speed. I just don't. I, it's hard to it's hard to do that versus teams with speed. But we will see what happens. So the spread right now, I believe um, Michigan is favored by two points. That is 
based off of ESPN. Um, and I don't know what the over-under is, but Bray, if you had to pick a team, who you picking? I'll be picking. If I had to pick a team, I like Michigan. I like Michigan. Michigan? Oh, it's yeah. Good feeling. I like Michigan. Michigan. I think they're going to win. I think they're going to come out. They're going to play hard and play physical. I think they're going to come out. They're going to upset Alabama. Well, I don't know if I'm going to upset, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it wouldn't be an upset on paper. You know, or, you know, I guess by, by Vegas' standards, because Vegas is actually picking them. But I really, I still think, man, that they're just trying to make a whole bunch of money. So if you put your money on this game, oh boy, like bet with your mind and not with your heart. <laughs> my goodness, dude. <laughs> that is, this one, I, I'm just telling you, I do not see yeah. any realistic way that Michigan uh, Now, you know, a little a little part of me, you know, still kind of mad about the SEC championship. I, was, I wasn't even going to get into that. I, I wasn't even going to take it there, but I'm, I'm, glad that, I'm glad that you said a little, that. A little part of me is still mad about the SEC championship. So that, that has a little bit to do with it. But I still think Michigan is going to come out. Yeah, I think it's, it's, I think at least going to be a good game. I don't think it's going to be a ball. I think it's at least going to be a good game. I think, man, look, all games start off close, so this one will too because they all start off 0-0. But I, I would say going into about the second quarter or, you know, maybe going into halftime, we're going to start to see that gap open up. And then coming out of the second half, we're really going to see it open up wide because Alabama not only has, you know, high-level talent, but they've got a lot of depth with this. Like, there's no real drop off. It's just a lot of guys that will keep coming at you in waves. They also played the number one. The, you know, they had the strongest strength of schedule based off of ESPN. So, I mean, like, you can look at those stats and say, well, you know, Michigan this, Michigan that. The best offense that Michigan played up against was ranked, I don't know what. Like, uh, um, probably Hall State, right? Yeah. And I don't even know what their, their offense wasn't even like top 10 anything. You know what I'm saying? So, uh yeah, I, I think Yeah, you know what yeah, not goes. thinking about not thinking about it. Yeah, I think Bama, I think Bama is coming to win. No, no, oh no. yeah. I mean I I think it's easy to say Bama's gonna win. Uh, let's let's be bold with the takes, man. I've got Alabama winning this game by at least twenty points. Twenty points? Yeah, That's, twenty points. I, I, at just, least. I don't I don't know. I just I don't see them winning by twenty points. I just feel like in a in a game in a game like this, I just I just don't I just don't think so. I just don't think so. Um, well, I mean, I, what, I what was the score could... to that Alabama Georgia game in what was that twenty twenty one? They got blown out, dude. I'm I sure they lost by out. no, yeah. they they lost by twenty points. Uh, if yeah, I'm but not that, mistaken, that's also very different. Like, great. What's it different? Bryce it's Young, it's the James exact same team. No, it's not. It's not the exact same. Who are you team talking about, Bryce Young? I'm what talking about when Michigan played Georgia. In, oh, in like two years ago. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a, that's, a, that's a whole different. It's is it not the exact same team? No. Is that not the exact same quarterback? Well, I mean, he's been there for about thirty years. Is man. it not the exact same every like that? That's the exact same team. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. Yeah, that's it. That is the exact same. Well, I mean, I could be off on a couple of players. I mean, obviously, guys get older, they get better. But it, the as far as the style of play, nothing has Wait, changed. No, it wasn't JJ McCarthy. He didn't. He didn't play. It okay. Was someone else. It was someone else. Okay. But, so it was. It was somebody else. Okay. That's perfectly fine, but they look like the exact same team. I'm sure that their numbers are probably almost identical. So it's stuff like that. But anyway, we will see. You know, I don't want to piss people off, but I'm just gonna call it like I see it, man. Michigan's about to get ran up out of the ran up out of the stadium. I like Bama by ten. Bama by ten. Okay, I'm taking Bama by twenty five. All right, <laughs> on to the next game. Uh, that's the Sugar Bowl. Okay, so the Texas Longhorns versus the Washington Huskies. Oh boy. Hey, how he feels about the Bama Michigan game is exactly how I feel about this game. I think Texas wins by about 35 points. I, I just don't see any way Washington can match up. They, I mean, these Pac-12 defenses, not good at all. It's just like playing 7-on-7. Seven seven. We'll see what yeah. they have to do when they have to play a real D-line, a real, a real big D-line. And uh, You see what Pinnock said? He said he was basically calling Texas D-line overrated. He was like, we're not playing versus the Eagles for a nice D-line. He's basically giving them bulletin board material. I think Texas D-line, defense, they all come on. They just shut it down. And, uh, yeah, I just like Texas by about 35 minutes again. Yeah, so I think that that's crazy. So this one, to me, is going to be a lot closer than the Alabama, uh, than the Alabama-Michigan game. Whenever I'm, I'm looking at this, and, like, I've kind of – I've seen ways where Texas can win. You know, I've always kept that margin of victory relatively close. But as I'm getting closer and closer, that gap is kind of starting to even up just a taste because, um, you know, I feel like the more that I'm watching film on Texas – the more that I keep on, uh, you know, looking over there at Steve Sarkeesian, you know, uh, yeah, he did beat Bama this season, but he's good for 
a bad loss or two. And, you know, we're, well, at least me, I'm, I'm a Falcons fan. So I, I knew Sark whenever he was coaching for the Falcons. You know, he's going to do two things, okay? Every single game he's going to have one to two plays where someone is just wide open. Okay, that's always going to happen. Um, he's always going to have a big run play. So it's always going to be like an outside zone play. He's going to somehow be able to scheme it up. It's going to be for, you know, 20, 30 yards. Every single game, those two things will happen. And every single season, it seems like he's going to lose at least one game that he shouldn't. Maybe that Oklahoma game was it this was it this season, but I kind of feel like Washington could be it. This is a game that on paper, you know, and really not even just on paper, but like if you watch these two teams play, it does look like, okay, Washington's offensive line looks really small, especially that center is only like 270 pounds. And then, you know, Texas has got these big mammoths playing tackle that are like, you know, 360, 370, um, and they can move. But at the same time, you know that Washington likes to run that tempo. Those big guys get tired. And I saw that a lot from watching film on them lately. They That pass rush, it it's, it's on a sometimes basis. It does not come all the time. And it doesn't really come in waves like you would think. So I am a little bit concerned about what uh, Texas is going to do in this game. And then something else, whenever I'm looking at uh, Texas's quarterback, uh, Quinn, Quinn Ewers, He's kind of like a wild man to me. You know, he's got some of that like wild man to his game. I don't really trust him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I still don't. I just see him doing stuff that looks like, oh, this is going to be a turnover. So, and, and, you know, this whole season, for the most part, it's turned into some good plays. But you watch that first, his first pass, um, awesome. you know. Yeah, dude. Like, what was that? I mean, he looked it down. And I mean, you know, I'm not going to live and die off one play for anybody. But that was horrible. Like, you don't stare it down. And see that a guy is covered, pump fake, and throw it anyway. It's <laughs> stuff like that. It's stuff like that that worries me, and it's really concerning in this game. So I don't know how to call it, man, but I do like Washington's offense. You know, I like Penix. I like their wide receivers. You know, I like their scheme. I like their head coach. I think that they're going to play hard. I think that they're going to be well coached. They're going to come out with a really good game plan. Um, and, you know, I'm hoping that Texas does the same. I, I think that if – I think that if all things are equal, right, let's say if both teams play perfect, I think that Texas wins. But I just don't. And obviously, both teams won't play perfect. Who's going to play the cleaner game, I think, wins this one. And I think it's going to be really close. Yeah. That's kind of <laughs> how I feel with the Michigan-Alabama game, like, in a sense. You know? But you I know, don't know, no. Because I disagree with that thoroughly. <laughs> well, that's just me, though. Like, whenever I'm looking at that game, I'm seeing a team that – tries to play smash mouth, run the football straight at you ball versus, it, okay, it's like it's like taking a third grade team that uh, that likes to run the ball like right up the middle and playing them against a sixth grade team. Like to me, that's what it looks like, right? But with Washington, because of their scheme and because of their style of play, they can get the ball out of uh, Penix Jr.'s hands quickly. Now, what I kind of felt like earlier on was, well, you know, that's going to work to start it off. But it's not going to work for the entire game. And that, you know, I felt like Washington could start off winning, especially if they get the football first. But Texas would kind of close that gap and then that their death would kind of take over. But the more that I'm seeing their their front four, the more that I'm worried. I'm like, well, I don't know if they can sustain that pass rush, um, you know, enough to be able to get to Penix Jr. and kind of throw off what their game plan is. I could see it going both ways, though. I could see it being a close game, or I could see Texas blowing Washington out. I can't see Washington blowing Texas out, though. I don't see that happening. Mm. But um, I don't know what the spread is on this game at this point um, because we did the prep for that like like a week or two ago. But, uh, well, actually, I think that um, I think that Texas is favored still by four and a half points. So would you take that uh, in favor of Texas, or would you take it in favor of Washington? I would take that in favor of Texas. I wouldn't, man. I, I'm going to tell you, if, if I was a big man, I would put money on Washington to cover that spread. I, I don't think that Texas is – I think that this game comes – at most, I think that this game is won by three points. Unless I'm – maybe I'm watching too much film. You know how sometimes you can watch too much yeah. film? Maybe I've watched too much and I'm kind of overthinking it. But because, you know, I was kind of like, uh, you know, I think that Texas wins by seven. It's gotten down to – I see them – if they win, it's going to be by like three points. So that's where I'm at with it. Um and what do you have for the national championship? Uh, Texas and Bama. And I'm picking Texas. Uh, I've, said, Texas I've said it since the since I've seen them play in the Big 12 championship and since the committee has come out on what I saw Georgia was in, I said I, I like Texas winning. 
Um, and I just like you know Sark. Uh, he, he's been there before. I think mm-hmm. it was big. Uh, he's been in you know big time games before. Mm-hmm. I think it's been now. It is hard to beat Saban twice. I don't think. I don't know if anyone's ever done that. But um, yeah, I just I just like their scheme. Um, I, and I just think they they have the talent on uh, the matchup with Bama again. And, you know, it, it's 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 definitely gonna be a good game. But I like Texas. You know now. Yeah, so I don't know if I can even think that far ahead. But, yeah, I mean, obviously I've got Alabama winning, and I'm picking Texas to win this one too. I think it's going to be close. Um, But, yeah, if I had to talk about the championship game, I think that I would probably lean more towards Alabama winning it again, unfortunately. Um, Which might not be unfortunate, guys, because you know what that means? Saving might be gone. Saving might be (laughs) gone. (laughs) Nah, man, I I think Saving's going to come back next season because this team's going to be even better next year. So I, I think that he's probably now. After, I think after next year he might go ahead and hang it up. But so I think that you know it's just probably not wise for us to hope for Bama mm-hmm. to win because Saban's going to be mm-hmm. gone after that because we just you know we could end up with him maybe winning it back to back. I don't think it's going to happen next season though because Tennessee's got a squad. Uh, but you want to you want you want what you think? You know you think I you think I got a chance of uh, Evan Stewart? Oh, man, Evan Stewart, I don't know. Uh, I, I think that if Tennessee performs well, and, yeah, we didn't talk about uh, the Citrus Bowl because we've already talked about it so much. But, yeah, I mean, if we did talk about it, yeah, I think that part of that game is going to be showcasing what the offense can do. And if Nico plays well, then, yeah, I think that – I kind of feel like that's what Evan Stewart is waiting to see. How's the offense look with Nico and everything else? So, yeah, um, I've been hearing a whole lot of rumors and, and rumblings. Mm-hmm. We'll see here shortly. You know, it sounds like we could hear something – well, I guess we have to hear something, what, like in the next couple of weeks? Yeah. Is that right? Something like something that? Like that. I think by like the 14th or 15th. But that's going to be it for this one, y'all. Appreciate y'all for staying all the way to the end. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We'll see y'all on the next one. Thanks. Peace.